Okay, in this video, we'll continue practicing solving absolute value inequalities. And let's start with the first one right here. We have nine plus six times the absolute value of seven x minus six is greater than negative 69. So we always wanna isolate this part first. Isolate this part first. So let's subtract nine away from each side and this will go away. We'll have six times the absolute value of 7x minus 6 is greater than, we have negative 69 minus 9, which would of course be negative 78. The next step, since this is multiplying the absolute value part, and we want this isolated, we'll divide each side by 6. So that'll cancel. We'll divide this by 6. And what we'll get, okay, what we'll get is the absolute value of 7x minus 6 is greater than negative 78 divided by 6 is negative 13. Now I've done problems like this before. I did one in the main lesson, I did one in the other practice problems. You should know at this point that you can stop, right? Because if you think about absolute value and what it really means, it's, again, it's telling you you want the distance from the number to zero on the number line. Now the distance is always going to be non-negative. So what that means is that no matter what I plug in for x here, doesn't matter. I multiply it by seven, I subtract away six. If the result of that is negative, I take the absolute value and it's positive. So any positive number will be greater than negative 13. It could also be zero, right? But zero is greater than negative 13 as well. So no matter what I plug in for x, I'll get a true statement. So basically here, the answer is all real numbers. In interval notation, I could write it like this, or graphically, I could shade the entire number line, right? So shade these arrows in, and then basically just shade this entire thing here. And I kind of covered up my arrows, so let me just kind of redo that, kind of shade a little arrow there. But basically, you just need to know that no matter what number you pick, okay, you plug it in for x, you'll get a true statement. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, here we have eight times the absolute value of three V minus six plus eight is less than or equal to 80. So let's rewrite this down here. We have eight times the absolute value of three B minus six, then plus eight is less than or equal to 80. Again, my first step is always to isolate this absolute value part. I want the absolute value operation is less than or equal to some number in this case, right? It could be greater than or equal to if that's what you're dealing with, but here we have a less than or equal to. So I'm gonna subtract away eight to start, and I'll get eight times the absolute value of three B minus six is less than or equal to 72. I'll divide each side by eight. This will cancel with this. And what I'm gonna have is the absolute value of three B minus six is less than or equal to nine. So now we have something that we should be familiar with working with. We have the absolute value operation on one side, we have a number on the other, right? This is a less than, and it's a less than or equal to, but it's a less than. So this means we're setting up a compound inequality with and, and your scenarios are always the same. It's this part that changes. So the first scenario is always just to remove your absolute value bars and write what's there. So you'd have three B minus six is less than or equal to nine. So then and, your second scenario is that this right here, remove the absolute value bar, so 3b minus six could be greater than or equal to, you flip the sign, you're gonna flip this, and then you're gonna make this number negative. So it could be greater than or equal to negative nine as well. So it has to satisfy both. Whenever you see and, it has to be the intersection, right? It has to satisfy both. So what you'll notice is that you can write this as a three-part inequality. So 3b minus six is in the middle, and we know it's greater than or equal to negative nine and less than or equal to positive nine. So let's solve this. So we'll add six to each part. That's gone. You'll have negative nine plus six is negative three is less than or equal to three B, which is less than or equal to 15. And then as a final operation, I'll just divide each part by three. And I'll have isolated B. So B is greater than or equal to negative one and less than or equal to five. So it's giving you a range, right? It's from negative one to five, including both negative one and five. 
any of those numbers in that range, you plug them in for B, you'll get a true statement. Anything outside of that range, you won't get a true statement. So let's bring this back up to the number line. So again, B is greater than or equal to negative one and less than or equal to five. In interval notation, it just looks like this. You have a bracket with negative one and a bracket with five, right? To say, hey, those are both included. And then graphically, I'll put a bracket at negative one and a bracket at five, and I'll shade everything in between. All right, let's take a look at another one. We have 10 times the absolute value of two minus six x plus four is greater than or equal to 44. So again, isolate the absolute value part. So let's subtract four away from each side. You'll have 10 times the absolute value of two minus six x is greater than or equal to 40. Divide each side by 10, so the absolute value part can be isolated. This will cancel with this. You have the absolute value of two minus six x is greater than or equal to four. Now, when we see a greater than symbol, I know this is greater than or equal to, but when we see a greater than symbol, we're thinking or, okay? It's a compound inequality with or. Now your two scenarios are always the same. The first one is just to remove the bars and write what you see. So two minus six x is greater than or equal to four. This is the part that changes. You're gonna have an or statement. Sometimes it's an and if you have a less than or a less than or equal to. The second thing you do is you remove the bars. So two minus six x, you flip the sign. So flip the sign. Then you make this negative. So this will become negative four. All right, so let's start out on this side over here. I'm gonna subtract away two from each side. So that's gonna cancel. And I'm gonna have negative six x is greater than or equal to two. I'll divide each side by negative six. And remember when you do that, you have to flip the direction of the inequality. So instead of greater than or equal to, that'll be less than or equal to. So we'll have x is less than or equal to negative one third. Okay, so that's one scenario. Over here, we'll subtract two away from each side. That's gonna cancel. We'll have negative six x is less than or equal to negative six. We will divide each side by negative six. But again, remember when you do that, you have to flip the direction of this guy. So what we're gonna have is x is greater than or equal to the number one. And this is an or statement in between. So x is less than or equal to negative one third, or x is greater than or equal to one. So let's pull this down by the number line. We'll look at this graphically. So to graph this, if we think about negative one third, that's something like right here, let's say. This is negative one third. I would put a bracket there, and then I would shade everything to the left, since x has to be less than or equal to that. And then we have this or, x could also be one, so I'll put a bracket there, or it could be anything larger. So I'll shade everything to the right. And when we use intervals to write this, we use the union of the two solution sets. So in other words, from negative infinity up to and including negative one third, make sure you use a bracket there. It's the union of this set with this other set that starts at one and includes one and goes out to infinity. So that would be your solution using intervals. This would be your solution graphically. And then you could also write it like this. X is less than or equal to negative one third or X is greater than or equal to one. Meaning that if you pick a number from negative one third and including negative one third and then moving to the left out to negative infinity, it will work when you substitute it in for X. Or I could also pick a number that's one, including one or a larger going out to positive infinity, that will work as well. Anything in between here, kind of the areas that are not shaded, those won't work. In other words, if I plug in a zero for X, I won't get a true statement. Okay, let's take a look at one more problem. We have 10 times the absolute value of six X minus seven plus 10 is less than 60. So let's subtract away 10 from each side to start. And what we'll have is, we'll have 10 times the absolute value of six X minus seven is less than 50. So you get this absolute value part by itself. I'll divide each side by 10. We'll get absolute value of six X minus seven is less than five. And we're working with a less than, so this is and. Okay, this is a compound inequality with and. First scenario, remove the bars, write what you see. Six X minus seven is less than five. So then and, second scenario, remove the bars. Six X minus seven, 
flip this so it was greater than, make this negative, negative 5. Okay, flip this, flip, make negative, make negative. Basically, this is always what you do, whether you have a less than or a greater than. The thing that changes is this word, right? If it's a less than, it's an and. If it's greater than, it's an or. So that's what you need to remember. Okay, so because we have an and here, let's go ahead and write this as a three-part inequality. We have 6x minus 7 is greater than negative 5, and it's less than positive 5. So to solve this, I'm going to add 7 to each part. And what I'll have is over here, 2 is less than 6x, which is less than 12. Divide each part by 6. And what we'll get is 1 third is less than x, which is less than 2. So x is basically any number between, x is any number between 1 third and 2, not including either 1. So on the number line, let's say 1 third is right here. Let's say that's 1 third, and we know 2 is there. I'd put a parenthesis at each to say they're not included, and I just shade everything in between. And then an interval notation, this is the interval from 1 third to 2, not including either 1. So any number that's in between those two numbers, when plugged in for x in the original inequality, will give you a true statement.